Anything else? There we go. So let's dive in straight away. So what we've converted since the last DSC community call, I think Johan did that one, the X bit locker on X database. I believe Dan has done another one, but uh, I'm not too sure. So if he's around, he's going to comment otherwise. No, I actually, I think all of mine are done now. I think I've, I've got uh, Okay. So yeah, so we've got that one. And then uh, Johan is also working on X cred SSP. Uh, we believe that from the one, from the DSC community, um, for the DSC community resource modules, we've done pretty much all the one which are active. If you believe we're missing some, let us know. But if they're not on the new CICD pipeline, which is a bit of work, but if they're not on the new pipeline, it's going to be hard for us to release. We will need to first convert to the new pipeline and then being able to release. So um, just check what's not converted and you can see we have um, a GitHub project to track what is not being converted. And if you really want to use it or if you believe it would be really good to have it, let us know, I'll provide feedback again in the DSC Slack channel. Yeah, I'll, I'll check it in the uh, in the chat because it is it is quite useful. I think there was a, I thought DHCP was still missing. That could be. So. Uh, Come on, PowerPoint. Oh yes, so there's a new one. So I was not there last DSC community call, uh, but I believe there's a new uh, DSC resource module that's uh, been uh, done by maybe some of the guys are in this chat and feel free to unmute and say hi. Uh, but there's Config Manager CB DSC, um, and that's the Config Manager current branch, that's the name. Um, uh, if you have any questions, if you want to go and look at it, feel free. The, it's on the DSC community organization, and they have some examples, and they're doing some, uh, that, that's very recent work. And they, these guys, I believe, work for Microsoft as uh, customer engineers or whatever the name is these days. So that's what is being completed, I believe, but I'm pretty sure there's some missing in there or there might be some missing in there. And um, we will check, but at least those one have been completed. So if you have some news and we're still looking for help. So if you want to contribute to maintain or just do a code review every now and then, or even raising issues, that's very valuable. A very quick note, so we've seen at least, uh, thanks to Michael Lombard, uh, we've seen that there was an issue with the security policy DSC. So when we started transitioning a year ago, um, a few versions have changed. So we fixed a few issues, like module builder was pinned to version 1.0.0. Now we need to make sure it's on latest. And because PESTA um, doesn't support code coverage yet, we are pinning to 4.10.1, but as soon as Jakob uh, uh, implements code coverage, we will uh, make an effort to move to uh, PowerShell 5. And there's another quick uh, issue. So one of the parameters changed, so we change it in the build the channel uh, configuration for the pipeline. So what has been released since the last call? Uh, there's been probably several versions on several preview releases. Feel free to try them. And if you have any questions or if you have any issues, file a bug, uh, come on the DSC uh, Slack channel again. Yeah, best of five, I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but, um, and so, the so yes, if you have an issue, please, if you have any problem with those releases, feel free to give feedback as soon as you can before they're tagged as new releases. And, come on, Ryan, you're late. Uh, come on. There we go. So there's another thing. A uh, sampler is what is driving the pipeline. So sampler is actually a module which expose invoke build tasks, and we're using all of those tasks. So because you're in your required um, in your required modules dependencies, and um, I will show you actually. There's a quick video how to create a new module, and you can use that. Um, you can use that to create a new DSC resource module if you want to. And this is also what we're using for the, the new CI/CD pipeline we're using. The idea is you can 
quickly a module that will be able to build and you will be able to uh, create that repository very quickly um, with all the configuration files and all those files. So it's using plaster under the hood and then you can very quickly start the building of your of your DSC resource. And this is what we're using. And um, it's, we're still improving it, but I think uh, no, it's uh, even more usable if you we use that for the conversion. I know you can just create a new module very easily. And it's got a lot of examples how to do the, those tests, uh, or the test we're doing, the coverage threshold. And then you see that uh, some of the tests are not working on partial seven. And uh, we'll see, maybe uh, maybe that's uh, that's going to change soon, one day at least. But uh, that's uh, the current state of play. So if you want to use it, feel free to. And if you want to give feedback, please let us know. But if you want to start a new module, whether it's a DSC resource module or not, feel free to use that. Just going to let you, so the video is available on YouTube anyway. And uh, we will try to add more uh, samples, so more um, easy to add uh, components to your module. So if you want to add a class-based resource, for instance, you can add it very easily. And we want to make sure the best practice are followed and we'll try to add documentations around it when it's done. So uh, just a few, maybe one more minute. So it creates everything for you at the beginning. So then you have an example with a morph resource and then you can quickly edit, make your changes. And then uh, it also includes the Azure Pipeline YAML we're using. And you can just build your module and then test your module, publish your module in the same way. If any question again, come in the Slack channel. So no, no, not you. No, we've got Steve with us. Uh, I was really lazy. I just did a, a, a quick uh, screen grab from, I think it was a PowerShell blog. So Steve, if you want to take it from there, you feel free to share your screen if you want to. Okay. Um, I actually don't have anything to show. I didn't have any demos prepared, but let me uh, let me just kind of do a quick introduction for those who don't know me. So I am uh, the engineer manager for PowerShell Core or PowerShell now, um, and this includes DSC. So let me go into a little bit of context so people understand what one of the changes are from my team perspective. So about I want to say like three to four months ago. DC was a separate team, um, and their focus has been on guest configuration. Uh, Michael Green says no mic for me. You, can, you guys can hear me, right? No, yeah, he doesn't have a mic, I guess. Okay, just making sure of what he's talking about. Okay. Um, so in any case, so the guest config team has been really focused on building out, uh, basically deploying DSC across Azure, and it's built on top of DSC. Um, and the discussion I've had with that team is, you know, uh, I don't know if they're ever going to get to, you know, what Michael Green had posted a while back, which is like DSC core. Uh, and maybe there's something that the PowerShell team, my team could take kind of own ownership of. So we kind of had that decision. And one of the first things I wanted to do was really kind of re-look at, you know, what does the future DSC look like? Kind of similar to what I did with PowerShell Git um, when I took over that project as well. And I think for me, there's a couple of things. One is we really want to make DSC uh, truly cross-platform. Like DSC was cross-platform if you knew how to write like an oh my provider. And I don't, not, I won't, I won't go into those details. Um, but you know, you couldn't write a DSC resource uh, that could work across Linux and Windows. Um, so with the new uh, world, I want to have a because PowerShell itself, PowerShell seven. Uh, I'm going to exclude PowerShell Core six for in this conversation. Uh, PowerShell 7 Plus, we want to really focus on cross-platform, bringing new customers to PowerShell, um, allowing people to manage uh, heterogeneous clouds across AWS, Azure, Google, whatever the case may be. Um, but you know, we want to make sure to have PowerShell and DC anywhere that you want to be at, right? Um, so one of the first things we had to look at was really what are the limitations preventing DC from working on Linux? And there are a couple of big ones. One is on Windows, we have this dependency on the LCM, which is built on top of WMI. And the WMI equivalent on Linux was this Oh My project, which is a separate open source project. It was owned by a different team at Microsoft. Um, and at this point in time, uh, that team that is maintaining Oh My has explicitly said they're not doing any work to support PowerShell. Um, so, which is fine. That's a decision they can make. Um, so that was one problem. The other problem really is uh, writing an Oh My provider means writing native code. Uh, and again, all my providers don't work with uh, uh, with WMI on Windows, so you're really kind of writing multiple resources for different targets, 
and it's hard to write it in native code. You're not going to get as many resources published. Um, so that was definitely a problem. So one of the things we actually did in PowerShell 7.0 is we updated the invoke DC resource commandlet that's part of the PS desire state configuration module, which we ship with PowerShell 7, so that you can actually invoke it directly without going through the LCM. So the idea there is really anyone who wants to just directly leverage all the great stuff that you guys have been doing in DC resources where you kind of encapsulate a lot of the uh, you know states, uh, you can actually just invoke it directly. So the main benefit there is not, besides not having depends on LCM, it means that you could actually write your own agent or you can actually connect it to other potential agents like Ansible, uh, Chef Puppet it makes it easier for them to use because now they don't have to necessarily go through LCM and go through that those kind of behaviors. So we did do that in 7.0 as an experimental feature. Um, and as we were doing that experience, um, there are certain limitations that we hit due to both cross-platform and other limitations, but we're, we're making improvements on that. Now, the other big thing that we looked at now um, since we took over the project in 7.1 was all right. Uh, the whole dependency on MOF was a strategic decision made very early on in DSC's project, uh, having it tied to WMI, and there, there are a lot of benefits to that. But in this new world, uh, you know, MOF syntax and either whether it's WMI or OMI wasn't really in the picture anymore. And we have technical limitations of uh, support, continue to support MOF, anyways. And so one of the reasons, one of the decisions we made kind of early on is, hey, let's move away from MOF, and can we move to something that's more heavily used by the rest of the industry? And the decision we made was to move to JSON, um, and it's kind of partial, um, which I'll get into. So the main limitation we had is that if you wanted to do a script-based resource on Linux, uh, they do, due to the technology and depends on the OMI native code to parse them off we decided, hey, let's just have a conversion tool to convert any existing resource from MOF to JSON, and we'll have uh, PSDSR state configuration just understand the JSON schema. So that was a new thing that we introduced. Uh, because right now, uh, when you compile a DSC configuration, it still generates MOF. That wasn't something that is needed right away. It's something we're still talking about, so that will come later, where we kind of move off of MOF completely. Um, there was something that I want to also call out that was brought up I think on Twitter is where I think I saw it regarding um, DC configuration files. These are PSD ones. So those are uh, basically PowerShell hash tables in a PSD one file, and that's going to stay that way. Uh, again, the reasoning here is really we're not trying to change everything if we don't need to. Um, the MOF was never intended for humans or people to modify and read anyways. That was really for a way to transport uh, serialized objects uh, from one computer to another computer. So JSON, which is also not easily readable, um, makes sense to, to use that. It's easy to parse for machine. So those are kind of like the big things. Um, the other thing I'll call out is that with, uh, I'll call it DC V3 from here on, is that uh, it is still a project that's in progress. It will not be complete by the time we ship PowerShell 7.1. Um, it will probably be something that we want to target to have as GA, meaning you can have in production by in, during 7.2 timeframe, which would be next calendar year. Um, and then there's also a big discussion point. I want to kind of get some feedback from the DC community about whether it makes sense to only support class-based resources rather than uh, all the work that we started. And it'd be a lot more work to finish to support script-based resources. Um, in that case, you don't have to worry about the JSON schema at all because it's just part of the, the class anyways. Uh, so, however, we want to collect that feedback. Gail, if you're talking, you're on mute. Which is best for everyone. Um, if someone has a, any opinion on that, so would you prefer being, so maybe just to recap, so the question is, do we need script-based resource without the MOF? Or can we just go with the class-based DSC resource? And just so you know, like one of the, uh, so I have two engineers on my team kind of working on the DSC. Um, and one of them actually thinks that it'd be possible to produce tooling so that if you have a, what I'll call legacy script-based resource, you could actually uh, write tooling to wrap that as a class-based resource anyways, to make that conversion easy if you want to, if you depend on some, you know, existing script-based resource and don't want to rewrite it as a class. 
but really for the future, as we have a lot more DC resources, it seems like it'd be easier if we just standardize on one thing, which would be class-based. Yes. So if anyone wants to unmute and give uh, their opinion, otherwise I'm going to go <laughs> and give my... Well, if, if you if you take a look at the, the current resources that, that exist, I see very few uh, class-based resources and the majority are script-based resources. So if we decide to, if you guys decide to go to with, uh, with class-based uh, resources only, uh, then, then some kind of conversion or uh, backwards compatibility or something like that uh, would be necessary uh, in order to have the same amount of resources being available uh, towards the future on DSC v3. Uh, if everybody needs to rewrite their resources, that will be one hell of a job and will take some time before that will uh, will be in place. So, yes and no. It looks like it's a big change, but it's it, it's not. Um, so I think it's very possible and it's not too difficult, to be honest, to create a conversion one using AST and the work that uh, Johan and others already done to look at the MOFs and then from the MOFs you, you just need to create your class with um, the parameters and the properties that DSC needs. So that's definitely possible. And just, you know, the code within the get target resource, set target resource and test target resource can just be, you know, copy and paste it inside. So we can create a script to do that. Yeah, something. Go ahead, Cal, I was just going to say, yeah, I think actually that the conversion of the the modules themselves are going to be reasonably easy. I'm that we need to do a couple of test ones just to see what the unit test. Yes. If we if we expect unit test uh, changes on the unit testing code, I imagine there will be, but hopefully they're not too significant. Um, there, they should just keep going. But it really depends. Some of the unit tests are written in different, you know, in different methodologies than the others. And, and then for the details, uh, the I think what's really important to understand is even if you don't do that, so in, in DSE and in the most based resource, there's something we call uh, embedded class or nested class. And that means you have different classes, not only your DSE, but you have uh, your DSE class property. They use another MOF to define what it expects. And the problem is, uh, if, even if you use JSON, uh, you will use, a, it's going to be a different parameter. So that means you would not have, even if they go with the JSON one, it won't work directly for those classes that use nested types. They won't work directly. While if we use, as far as I understand it, if we go directly with the class-based resource, then they don't have to deal with that problem. And then class-based resources are more likely to be backward compatible with the MOF, well, with, the, with PowerShell 5.1, and PowerShell 7.x. Yeah. And that's a big, in my opinion, that's a big argument to say, well, in that case, the real question is, are people happy to use classes instead of the script base? And in my opinion, if you if you have everything in your PowerShell code, that means everything is available through AST and you can have very small, uh, smaller, uh, smaller DSC resource, which is just the class. And I think this is very attractive even simpler for people, even if the construct of classes is a bit new to many um, PowerShell uh, users. In terms of DSC, that would still be simpler than a MOF based resource where you have the MOF bit, you have the PSD one, you have the PSM one. I think it would just simplify to have one way, which is in one file, easy to, to manage. Yeah, I think you can reduce a lot of that burden too by having like scaffolding for spinning up a new DSC class based resource. Like if I have like a command to, to write that, then it, it cuts down on a whole lot of that pain. Exactly. Yep. Uh, let me just, I want to cover one thing that was brought up though about there being a lot more script-based resources than class-based resources. I think that's um, an unfortunate side effect of when we actually had the class-based resource infrastructure available, uh, which was much later than when we had a script-based resource available and we started asking people to write resources. So. It took a while for us to kind of fix all the issues in PowerShell classes to support DSC. Uh, so that's, I think that's really just an unfortunate side effect of that. But now that that's available, and in my opinion, a much better development experience, uh, besides the benefit of MOF not being there, uh, it seems like a good direction to go. And we can, and PowerShell team will continue to enhance the class uh, type so that 
it can be used beyond DSC. Like I don't have any time frame when that's going to happen. But if there, are, I would actually prioritize anything that we need to do in enhanced classes for DSC uh, over if we need to generalize it for general usage at this point in time. I think we also held on early on. We held on to script based because we needed to maintain support for for Windows Server 2012. That's um, true. I think if we can sort of formally say, look, that's just, sorry, no longer supported. If you want to use that, great, but you have to use the older versions. And we make that formal announcement, set everyone's expectation, then I say, yeah, go go class-based. It does seem like it'll be the best idea. But as, as Johan points out, we just got to also change the, the, some of the tooling behind the scenes, especially for the auto documentation and um, the, the pipeline code it should still work, just there's got to be a bit of sort of groundwork done from our end to make sure, you know, Gail, imagine there might be a bit of stuff at sampler side that also needs to be done to make sure everything works, or is it just going to work? I think it works already. Okay, sweet. Because I made some change last week, that's why. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I want to just make a quick comment about Windows Server 2012 R2. Like, I don't know what the actual life cycle for that is right now. I, I could look it up. But I think one of the benefits of the new model with PowerShell 7X with the DSC v3 is that it's all self-contained. So whatever we develop uh, should just work on 2012 R2 or any platform that we support uh, PowerShell 7.x as a class-based resource. Hopefully that makes sense because we're not dependent on LCM, we're not dependent on Windows PowerShell, anything like that. We're not dependent on WMI. Yes. The challenge might be if you wanted to use, say, uh, that version of PowerShell with something like Exchange, where you're, you're pinned to a particular version of WMI, potentially. <laughs> That's true. Uh, yeah, I, I, I forgot to think about when you actually call from the DS resource into what you want to manage. Then that potentially, but you know, even with PowerShell, let's say that, um, like, I, I'm obviously I'm more on the engineering side, so I don't use all these products that you guys use. So you can help educate me. But let's say you're managing Exchange, and Exchange, let's say, only has commands that work with Windows PowerShell. Then, you know, one of the things that we did do in PowerShell 7.0 is that you can call from PowerShell 7 through into Windows PowerShell. So that may be a path. Again, we'd have to, I'd have to validate if this is a good experience or if it actually works or not, but it should technically work. It wouldn't be what I recommend, but... And just so you know, um, one of the things that we are talking about in PowerShell 7.2 timeframe, which is next calendar year again, is that uh, one of the things that we did in PowerShell Core 6.1 was that a bunch of uh, my team members actually actively worked with Windows partners to make sure that their modules that ship in box and Windows would be compatible with PowerShell Core 6 at the time. So we want to do that same exercise in PowerShell 7.2 time frame where we actually talk with a lot of the office teams and making sure like SharePoint Exchange and all these guys start thinking about um, making their stuff compatible with PowerShell 7, and we would actually do some engineering work and submit pull requests to them to fix whatever we can fix. Now, obviously, there are some technical challenges where .NET, let's say, call it .NET 6, which is what PowerShell 7.2 will be based on, made some tactical or strategic decisions to, not, to explicitly not support some dot, .NET framework APIs, in, uh, in which case there may be some reasons why without a complete rewrite of uh, that office owner's modules, it may never work. But um, when we get to those, we'll, we'll have those discussions with those teams. Uh, another example, uh, uh, you, you mentioned uh, with Exchange, uh, SharePoint uh, is, uh, is, is a nice example that will never, or at least the current versions, will never uh, be supporting uh, PowerShell uh, 6 or 7 since SharePoint still has an, uh, an, a good old-fashioned snapping. Ah. <laughs> so I know the right guy to poke and slap about that. Um, there's a thread I, I need to continue with. But but they, have said that they have said that they would like to do it. It's just not a high priority for them. So the more of us that could say, actually, can we move this, the, the better. Yeah, yes. and let me, let me reiterate one thing. Like, Having uh, external customers ask the teams to do something is much more powerful than having the PowerShell team ask because we are biased and we have our own agenda. Um, but to be honest, converting from a snap into a module is dead simple if you know how to do it. So we need to reach to them and tell them to contact Steve and his team to be able to change that. But that, that's definitely something we should push for it, at least the people in the community using SharePoint. 
So I see a comment about PowerShell 7 uh, native meeting inbox in Windows. So I'll, I'll just say that that's still a discussion we're having with a bunch of teams in Windows. Uh, I've mentioned this before, I think probably on uh, the PowerShell community call and also maybe some blog posts. Like the main the main challenge here, and I don't want to call out the .NET team because they're, they're wonderful to work with, but they've uh, made a decision where their LTS, which is the long-term servicing uh, release, only goes up to three years. And Windows has a five plus five uh, LTS lifecycle. So five years standard, five years extended. So obviously three is less than 10. Um, so we can't really ship something inbox in Windows where you only get three years of support because an enterprise would expect, you know, if they pay for it up to 10 years support. So we're, we're talking with um, Windows team as well as the .NET team on some solutions to that problem. And, you know, I don't have anything to announce at this point, but um, the discussions are still ongoing. So I'm, I'm kind of optimistic that maybe at some point in the future, we'll see PowerShell 7 inbox in Windows. So does anyone have more feedback about JSON, MOF, or just go class-based, or in class-based, which means, so, so my other argument towards that is that means less work, less work for the PowerShell team, less code to support, and, and also for us, for the DFC community, it's easier so that we can just go all in into class-based, which if you've been to the previous um, to the previous DSC community call, we had uh, Bartek, we did a presentation about uh, class-based DSC resource. And he says like there's many advantages to them. And another reason we didn't move initially is because we didn't know how to mock some methods, which no, uh, we, are, we are improving. And if you've seen uh, for Pesta uh, today, uh, Jakob tweeted about Maybe built, maybe doing it built in, so having a built in way to mock methods, so that would be much easier for class based. So I think the problem we had initially is not the same anymore. And I think letting the parcel team focusing on class based on the implementation of class based is more forward looking because that's just PowerShell construct. No messing with JSON, with JSON schema, and no, no change like this. The other consideration is you're not closing the door completely on the old uh, approach either that's still going to be available in the 5.1 stack. So um, yeah, I, I, I agree with Go. I think a forward looking approach is sensible. Yes, so that's only, that means going forward. So, so going PowerShell 7 plus, then it will be only class-based, but PowerShell 5.1 just doesn't move. And that's why having class-based would work on the old one, but also on the new ones. Any objections, feel free to chat it. Otherwise, I think maybe we can take more questions. What do you think, Steve, about, about this? What would you prefer? You mean you mean class versus script? I mean, yes. Like for me, for me, it's not just about forward looking, but also, you know, I have a limited number of engineers on my team. So if we could just focus on one thing and make that really amazing then it's going to be easier for my team to do other things across the partial ecosystem as well. So that for me, it's kind of like just a resource question as well as just a tactical strategic one. So, okay. I guess it would also be important to add it as a measure for a high quality resource, you know, to be written in a class based approach so that it's beginning to get aligned to this future state. Yes, so we've so we've discussed that uh, at, at least Daniel, myself, Johan, and I think we raised it before, like a maybe a month ago, with the DSC community and other DSC community calls. We want to get there, but what's missing is the tooling at the moment. So we really improved the tooling, but we will get there. And the idea is, if we know we're going that direction, then it's easier for us to focus on the right thing. And I think that's the same thing as what Steve is saying. Like it's easier for them to focus on the classes if they're going that way. Uh, there's a comment I wanted to raise from Brian. Uh, it says, uh, I think it, seeing the JSON as a common format would help a lot because a lot of Azure stuff is JSON. And that would be easy on the admins. Uh, so they only need to get frustrated with JSON and not a number of other schema methods or remember MOF. So the, the problem with that, so it's true that uh, JSON would definitely be an improvement over MOF. That's, I think everyone agrees. 
And the downside is you still have to understand the construct of a DSC resource, and then you need to understand the different files you need. You still need your schema, you still need the, the PSM one being in a certain way, you still need to have those things. And I believe uh, because of these different files, it's uh, even harder to explain to someone all the things you need. When you say, well, if you need a class, it needs to be, a, if you need a DSC resource, it needs to be a class. I think it can be slightly easier. Tell me if I'm wrong. Raymond, you wanted to say something? Yeah, they, there was one. Um, um, Mike Cleets mentioned uh, the, ah, come on, the composite resources. So does this have any effect on supporting composite resources or are they going to be unchanged by the approach for class-based resources? So I don't know if that's for Steve. I can I can. Why don't you it. take that? Since you probably know more about that, than, or Michael could talk if he wants. He doesn't have his microphone, so I will talk for Michael. Oh, that's right. Okay. Uh, so so it's it's not going to change it because class-based is a different code constructs and it's not running on the on the node. So class-based is uh, sorry composite resource. Composite is not running on the node. This is only at the compilation time. And as Steve said earlier, at the moment, uh, they're not going to change the compilation of uh, configuration. They only care about the DSC resource. So oh, okay. that's not going to impact the composites. Just wanted to make sure that things are in place. Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, so I guess the question will be back. Well, we will ask the question when they start working on the compilation. If they do, maybe. Well, I, like uh, so specifically about compilation, like we're not really uh, touching anything there. It should just be working across Windows, Linux, and Mac, but you're still going to get a MOF as output today. Um, and that's something that we're going to look at after we get this first iteration done um, with the JSON work. But again, if if the community agrees that we can now not spend time on that and focus just on class space, then we could probably get to the compilation sooner. Let me check the questions and the comments. Okay, I think we've answered it. So the question was, will this have an impact on composite resource? Are these considered partial script? So yeah, so we answered the composite side of this. Uh, composite resource is different. It's a different code construct. So it's, uh, it's um, yeah, it's slightly different. And that's not going to be impacted. If there's any other question, what do you see going? What do you see happening next? Oh, so first of all, what will? What do you need to make that decision, Steve? Uh, you mean specifically about classes? Yes. Um, I think at first I need to. Uh, talk to Joey uh, because I, I don't want to make this. I can't make this decision by myself. Like I, I am if you ask me personally. All right. So personally, as an individual, um, I would love to just focus on just on classes. I think it's the right decision. Uh, I think it also helps the community as we grow DC resources. People can just see examples only in classes. So there's no confusion about writing script resources versus classes, stuff like that. Um, it also allows my team to focus just on that aspect and make it really awesome. Um, but I want to make sure that uh, the PM side, this would be like Jason and Joey, whether or not if they have any concerns. Um, but hopefully we can kind of make a decision soon, like maybe in the next couple of weeks. I know Joey is really focused on Ignite right now. So, um, but uh, in, in that case, I'll probably, if we make a decision, we'll, we'll post something and then uh, maybe like a blog post or just announce it. Um, and again, I'm not expecting DSC V3 to be, to be really complete until sometime next calendar year. So we have time to do some experimentation, get some feedback, um, and you know, if we let's say that we decided with the classes, and then we get some great feedback that says, "No, you guys didn't consider X, Y, Z," and we say, "Yeah, that's important." You know, we have time to revisit that. Like, it's, I don't. It's not like we make this decision and we're stuck with it. So, that's a good transition with the question I wanted to ask. So, who's the PM, the most focused on DSC? Uh, I don't want to answer that right now because I don't think it's closed. Okay. It will be uh, someone on Joey's team. Okay. Okay, let us know when you know. <laughs> yes. And then uh, Michael had uh, a question, which you can just unmute and ask it, Michael. 
Yeah, that's no trouble. Um, so uh, recently did a whole bunch of work to re-up Puppet's integration with DSC. During that time, I was trying to uh, get things to work in PowerShell 7, thinking like, hey, if I could launch this thing with experimental support, that'd be great. Ran into too many bugs, and I didn't have a way to upstream those uh, or like a fast enough feedback mechanism. And so for the sake of shipping something, uh, we decided not to support uh, PowerShell uh, 7. Um, are there plans to open source the the LCMless implementation of DSC such that ah. we can upstream those sort of things faster? Yeah, yeah. great question. So as part of the DSC v3 work, the plan is to open source uh, the PS Desire 6 configuration module. Uh, and now to be clear, uh, open sourcing something at Microsoft is not simply uh, flipping that checkbox in GitHub to make it private to public. There's a lot of compliance work that we have to do. Uh, but besides the compliance work, we also want to make sure that repo is ready to service any issues and peers that get open, right? We don't want to just throw source code over the wall and say, good luck, you know, stuff like that. So uh, sometime, I don't have a date that I want to commit to at this point. Uh, sometime, hopefully in the near future, and near is going to be variable here, uh, we'll have the PS Desire State Configuration repo open so that you guys can help uh, contribute to that. Uh, here's what I would say is if there's any individuals uh, that would like to kind of uh, maybe help out earlier, uh, you can reach out to me and maybe I can give you access uh, to the repo, assuming uh, there are no other compliance issues with the source code there. You removed my access. What? Yeah, you removed uh, my access. I can fix that. I didn't realize that it was removed. I don't think I did it, <laughs> unless you know I did it. I know you did it because I had the notification saying, Steve, we removed your access. Uh, all right. I'll, I'll, have to, I'll have to check. I don't think, I don't recall doing that on purpose. So uh, it's fine. Just use it. Okay. That's easy to fix. Oh, actually, Gail, you know what happened? I, I know what happened. It's because I'll, I'll provide some in, inside context here. Uh, so we have the private PS Desire State configuration repo. And we, I'm trying to remember, I forget which way we ended up, but we forked it because guest config still needed all the existing code as it exists to do whatever they need to do. Um, I think at that point we had changed permissions. So it's that's probably how you didn't have permissions. So I'll, uh, I'll make sure you have permissions on the one that we're actively working on. Okay. Any more questions? Daniel. No, I was just I was just asking Steve for access to. <laughs> okay. Oh, sure. Yeah. Sorry. That makes three of us. Um, are there plans to uh, take a look at the reintegration of DSC resources into the help system uh, in the V3 timeframe, or is that for later? I think that's something we've always wanted to do and just never got around <laughs> to it. Sure. Uh, you can consider it in the backlog. Uh, for yeah. those who would like uh, access to the repo, if you can put your GitHub username, uh, that makes it actually much easier to find exactly if I'm inviting the right person. Worst case scenario, you can just DM me on uh, on Slack, and then I will I will forward to to Steve if you want. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll, I'll get through this after this meeting's over. How's that? Yeah, <laughs> that sounds good. good. Uh, and then I, I have lots of questions because I spent a lot of time integrating recently. Um, so uh, is it within the V3 timeframe to uh, move away from uh, having to parse them as SIM instances in order to get a look at everything under the hood? So that'd be I think great. that's an ongoing uh, discussion because okay. the decision that uh, the engineers made to move away from MOF, which includes moving away from SIM, is to have it as a PS object, which has its own uh, limitations. So I think we need to discuss further what the right thing would be. But uh, the idea is to move away from SIM instance as well. Good, because right now the way that the converter, the, the puppetizer works, uh, is it has to do a dummy call on a DSC resource to load it into memory and then get to parsing it, which requires running your converter as admin, which sucks. Yeah, that's not a great experience. So 
the okay. sooner we can move off of that, the happier I'm sure that the, the people who are doing the conversions will be. I think it'd be great to kind of un understand more like your scenario. Um, oh, so yeah. That, yeah. Again, like one, one of my users. <laughs> yeah. So like one of my goals is to enable like Puppet Chef and all the, all these other configuration agents to really utilize DC resources as easily as possible, right? Because that's how we're going to get adoption. So if you have any pain points from the past or if you anticipate any pain points as we move towards V3, do let me know so we can make those uh, decisions now. Yeah, for sure. I have lots of opinions. <laughs> awesome. So I, once you get access, maybe you can just open those as issues in the private repo for now, and we can have those discussions with the team. Yeah, I think that'd be useful. Sweet. I had a question and I forgot. Oh, yeah. Do you have um, any ideas that is just like you just trying to wait and see how it goes? Do you, Steve, do you have any ideas of things you'd like to do with DSC or or big broad ideas you'd like to get to? one day, probably not this year, probably not in the next six months, but maybe longer term? Uh, that's a great question. Like, um, I don't, and, and for me, again, I, I think part of it is going to, once we have the PM identified, I, I kind of expected that would be their part of their responsibility. Uh, my, right now, because uh, taking ownership of DSC is still relatively fresh in my mind, the, the immediate thing is really, you know, how do we get to cross-platform how do we get to kind of like an easier way to uh, enable the community to write DC resources so that we have a very rich uh, you know, environment to be able to use those things? How do we enable our partners like Chef Puppet and company to leverage that easily? Um, that's kind of like really just moving the needle a bit from the old model to new model. Like the question you're asking is really like more strategy long term. What does it look like? Uh, I don't have any immediate ideas right now. Like if you or anyone in the community says, hey, we think that this is really the direction DC should go. Like, this is one of the reasons I want to make it open source and have these conversations that you guys can actually, you know, put those uh, ideas out there and we can talk about it. Um, and we can all decide as a community, you know, what's the right direction for DSC. Like, I, I don't want people to feel like DSC is a Microsoft project, right? Uh, although most of the engineering work may come from Microsoft. For me, the success, same as PowerShell, the success of both projects is really about growing the community, having community contribute, having community contribute stra the strategy um, and over time, you know, getting more community maintainers, for example, stuff like that. Um, because hopefully this project gets bigger than just my team. And the only way to succeed is to get more people in the community to contribute. Because my team is not going to grow that big. That's just a, a being at Microsoft. Like Microsoft is a huge company with a lot of projects. So. so how can we get more teams to look at DSC? So more product teams to have, to consider, I would say. Um, contributing to DSC resource or just helping out or, or even taking on some of the dev? How do we reach question. to them? How do we find them? And what do we do to uh, to do that? So I think, uh, here, here's my opinion. Like, I think it's a little bit early to be reaching out to these teams only because we don't have the infrastructure ready. Because I think the one question would be, you know, do we do we really want to reach out to these teams and say only have something that supports Windows? And I, I think that'd be the wrong thing because now you're going to have the snap in problem, right? Where a bunch of teams said, yeah, we listen to you. We build our we're command list, but they're all snap ins and we don't want to do the work to convert to a module. And now you're going to feature say, and some teams it won't make sense because they don't exist on Linux, for example, but there may be like, I'll pick on SQL Server, which does run on Linux, for example, right? I don't know if they have a DSC resource, but they probably should if they don't. SQL or, there is an X. does run on Linux. Oh, no, I know. I'm saying like it would make sense to have a DC resource that is cross-platform for SQL Server because it does run on Linux and Windows, right? But a lot of other Microsoft products, as far as I know, don't. I can't think of other ones off the top of my head right now. Um, but if you're talking about just Windows, then yeah, I, I think for now, reaching out to those teams directly would make sense. But if we're asking them to build a DSC v3 one, regardless of whether or not it's cross-platform, I, I, I hesitate to have them be an early beta partner at this point because they might just get too frustrated. I think but, uh, another but, interesting scenario that I've used quite a bit is uh, where DSC is controlling uh, another entity. So the Office um, 365 DSC resource is an example. That's, that's probably an area of growth, if anything, because of the uptick in cloud. Um, I've got some Intune um, DSC resources, which I've been plugging away at for a while, which I'm hoping to contribute to that at some point. But yeah, just considering that, yeah, DSC not necessarily controlling the local thing, but potentially controlling another thing. It's a very 
very uh, interesting pattern. And and that's why maybe starting with an RFC like so then we can give them this is the strategy and start poking at them, starting building you know so so that's why I understand you don't want to send them to a moth based resource if that's not going to work but at least they start thinking about putting into their planning. Yep, so that would be good. So that's why having a strategy would probably make it easier for them to start planning around it. Great. Uh, there's more. Let me just catch up. So yes, talking to the product teams. Yes, definitely, that's something we should be doing. So, so that. Just unmute if you have things to say because I can't keep up with the chat. I, I, I was going to say, do we have a list of products that we would want um, modules for from different product groups at Microsoft? Because most of most of the modules are community driven, not product group driven. Yep. And I think from a community standpoint, probably conversations with any of those product groups that already have PowerShell modules for their products that they ship with their products to see how we can uh, get them a bit more on board with coming and helping the community build DSC modules around their product, their, their modules. Yes, so I don't think we want to have the product groups leading the DSC resources because one day they're going to be busy doing something else and then that's going to block everyone. So what we want probably is to have them at least know about the one that the community already has and then understand the need and then probably provide support as well. Support in terms of not supporting the resource, but helping and yeah. contribute to it. I was so thinking more like as a, as a guider to uh, this is the, why we've done this particular command like this. So therefore a DSE resource might need to use a series of commands. You know, more more is a more is not them doing the work, but them guiding how some work should be. Yes, no. So I, I agree with I think what both of you are saying, which is um, it would, probably would not be a great experience to have some of those product teams own the resource yeah. themselves for priority reasons, but also because they aren't experts in DC or probably even PowerShell. Um, but having them at least um, participate so they can at least let you guys know like there's a new version of this product that may have some changes or here's some other aspects that need to be uh, set up as configuration. Um, that would definitely be helpful, I think. All right, so last few questions. Uh, how can we reach out to you? Where can we find you? Or where can we find your team and the announcements you're making? Uh, so if you follow me on Twitter, I do generally post any uh, important announcements there because uh, it's very easy to do that. Um, I do either myself or someone on my team or the Joey's team, um, we try to post blog posts when we have a big announcement. Uh, so you know, just go to aka.ms slash PS blog to get to the partial blog. Um, otherwise, uh, if you can also try to, I don't know if I want to advertise it, but I mean, you can send me an email, but uh, I, I prefer not to get a bunch of emails. So I mean, I hesitate to, those, some of you already know my email address, but uh, you can easily find it. But uh, I, I think it's going to be easier. You can pay me directly on Twitter. I, I try to respond to everything I can because I don't get a ton of traffic there. Um, or if you add comments to blog posts, sometimes like that gets noticed. But I think the easiest way to get my attention, to be honest, is probably to tweet at me because uh, I, I do check Twitter at least a couple of times a week, not not a couple of times a day, though. And once we have the um, the repo open for PS Desire State configuration, then opening yeah. issues there are definitely something that we look at. So. Sweet. Thank you. I just put some links as well in the chat so that people can reach it. And then um, just as well, I will put, because there's new people, I will share some links, which is the dscommunity.org. So if you want to find us and some of the information, we try to put that here. And what's really important as well is the DSC community organization on GitHub. Uh, community, here we go. So you have 
the repository with the resources, you have the website and you have pretty much everything you need. And the last one is where to find help for DSC, which is uh, the Slack or Discord. Um, it's also the PowerShell.org forum and uh, the DSC Twitter account and the PowerShell team Twitter account as well. And the other reference like the DSC book by Dungeons and uh, Missy Generous Co, which is uh, which is uh, managed by the uh, DSC community. So if you want to see more things in the DSC book, feel free to ask. We can write it, which I actually I should finish when I started writing. If there's no more questions, uh, we'll stop the recording. And uh, thank you very much for everyone for joining in, and especially you, Steve, for sharing all this exciting news with us. I was going to say, Gail, no more no more questions. But I was just going to shout out and say, yeah, we're still we're still a bit short on on. Uh, community reviewers and contributors. So, anyone keen to, you know, submit a bug fix, documentation, whatever, review some some code, that would be awesome. I think we're all Johan tends to take the lion's share of everything. So yeah, keen to give give him a bit of support. So please, yeah, anything you can do would be fantastic. And also, if uh, you're struggling with getting started or anything, feel free to ask us, and we can write the documentation. So we've been doing it for so long, we sometimes don't know what to document. So feel free to ask. Well, thanks for inviting me, and I'll, I'll try to make sure to attend future uh, DSC community calls as well, even Sweet. as just a, as a listener. <laughs> Sweet. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Dave. Cheers. All right. Cheers, everyone. Thank Bye. You.